Good morning. Welcome to another episode of Feed Me Friday. Uh, I gotta leave the house soon, actually. I have to take my mom to get an endoscopy this morning. She has to go for them twice a year because she has cirrhosis and they are trying to make sure that she doesn't have any um, veins that are just about to burst. So that hopefully they won't find anything. Hopefully it'll just be in and out. Um, let's see. Things to talk about today. This is, um, I made meatballs the other day and this was like all the fat and the liquid in the pan left over. So I like to freeze it and save it because it tastes really good with the steak and eggs. Um, oh, all right. So I was, let me get my thoughts in order here. Several months ago, I was talking to someone in a, one of like the comments for the ads, like diabetic ads and stuff. And, you know, I was asking them, do you check your blood sugar after eating? And they said, yes. They said, uh, yeah, I keep it under 180. So, you know, the doctor says I'm doing good. And I'm like, hang on a second, under 180, that's too high. It should be under 140. And they're like, well, that's what my doctor told me. So, you know, they were gonna stick with it. Now, the thing is, they're not the only person to tell me that. Apparently, this is a thing. And then, not only that, but um, someone also told me when I said that my mom's A1C was 7.5 before she started the diet, this person's like, 7.5 is really good. That's that's great. And I'm like, how would you say that? That's That's not a good number. That means that the blood sugar is still out of control. So I'm sitting there thinking, well, who changed these numbers? Because it used to be, back when I had gestational diabetes, it used to be you had to keep it under 140 after meals. And then um, I knew that an A1C over like 5.8 meant that damage was going on. So I'm like, who, who changed the numbers? And why? Why did they change the numbers? So I tried to find it and I, I could not find it at that time. I was looking, I was typing in like every variation of the question and I just could not find it. So anyway, fast forward to, I guess it was Monday night. Uh, someone else brought it up again. And you know, I don't blame people where it's like you talk to some random person on the internet and they're like, you're doing it wrong, which I, I don't say it like that, but just, I'm just saying, you know, um, if someone was told from someone else on the internet, well, that's not how it works. I can see, you know, why they'd be upset. And, you know, it's like, no, that's what you're telling me is wrong. And I'm going to go with what my doctor says. I, I don't blame anyone for that because I'd be the same way, you know, um, hopefully I would look into it though. But anyway, um, so Monday night, I'm like, someone else was bringing it up again. And they were saying how, you know, it's good control because they're keeping it under 180. And I'm like, all right, Lord, I don't know how to find this. I did try to look for the information and I, I can't find it. I prayed and asked God to show me where the information was. All right, um, I'll wash my hands real quick. This is Wegmans Maple Pecan Coffee. I haven't tried this one yet, so I'm very excited about it. Um, one tablespoon of heavy cream, tablespoon of butter, scoop of collagen, and a few dashes of salt. So anyway, yeah, that night I prayed and was asking God to show me where the information was. And I found it. I couldn't even tell you how I found it or what word combination I typed in. It just came across it. So I will post a link for you guys if anyone else is interested. It was the American College of Physicians who changed it. Now... I went through and I read the whole thing. I can't say that I understood it all. I'm not a doctor, not a medical professional or anything like that. But, oh my goodness. I need, this is steak straight from the freezer, so I'm trying to separate it so I can put it in the fridge for tomorrow. Anyway, um, so here's what they said. They reviewed five different studies where or trials where people were you had two groups of people people with the standard care and then it 
a medicinal intervention. So um, what they noticed in these five studies was that the people who had um, the medicinal study to try and target an A1C, um, those people actually did worse than those in the standard. So it's like people were being hospitalized, um, they were having heart problems, uh, I, I, I can't remember if it was kidney problems, I think it was, but there was like the issue of diabetic retinopathy getting worse, um, just all kinds of problems. So that's why they changed the recommendations because they were solely going on if you can't achieve this safely through medicine, then here, let's change the numbers and a person who's um, who stays in this range should be fine. So it was also based on like how much time a patient had left to live. Um, and if, you'll see this at the very bottom of the paper where they were saying how um, if someone has like, I think it was, if they have 15 years left and no other terrible comorbidities. Um, you can aim for like between six and seven for an A1C. If they have five to 10 years left and they have some comorbidities, you can aim between seven and eight. And then if they've only got five years left um, and a lot of comorbidities, then you only, then you aim between eight and nine. So it had nothing to do with them saying, oh, you know, we were actually wrong before and people are fine if they have this A1C. It was more along the lines of, we can't achieve this A1C safely, so we're gonna raise the number. So, I mean, draw your own conclusions about that. I Everyone's always thinking that the medical industry is just out to get us and they're evil and whatever. I, after reading this, I was thinking, I don't think that, to me, I thought that was an ethical decision, as in, let me, let me get my words right here. They didn't want to harm the patients by chasing an A1C through medicine. So to me, that was a good decision. So that's not that they were being evil. What I do have a problem with is that, okay, if you can't get that way, if you can't get to that A1C through medicine, how about you try diet? How about you remove the foods that are causing the blood sugar to go up? That should be the next step. Now, this was back in 2018. Maybe they changed their mind about like, you know, ah. maybe since then they've come around and seen that diet's the way to go. I don't know, but my problem is that doctor's offices, um, dietitians, all these medical professionals are telling people that seven is a healthy A1C and that you don't have to aim for 140 anymore. You can just aim for 180. It's like, yeah, but that's where damage is going on. So yeah, trying to spread the word. I would love to see one of the top dogs tackle this, like um, Dr. Barry, Dr. Cywis, um, Dr. Westman. I wish I could, I wish I could like send them a message and know that they'd get it and see if they would, you know, whatever. Anyway, that is it for now. Um, oh, no, other news real quick. I gotta hurry up and eat, but here's the other news. Uh, my mom went to the nephrologist yesterday and she was saying that according to her numbers, she could be moved from stage 3A kidney disease down to stage 2, which is great news. She won't do it yet, she says, because it's just one lab reading. She said but if she can maintain it, if she can keep the levels there and steady, then she can move her out of stage 3A and down to stage 2. So... I was ex extremely excited about that because I just so happened to be talking to a few people yesterday who were like, yeah, but protein's bad for the kidneys. It's like, well, not for my mom. So, and my mom has stage three kidney disease and we've been doing this for five years. So um, her, her kidney problems were not brought on by the diet. She had the kidney problems before she started the diet because she's had diabetes for a long time now. 
and she's got cirrhosis. So anyway, good news. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, that's it for now. I'll talk to you guys later. I have been looking forward to this for like five days now. I only just got to make it today, but uh, recipe links are in the description. It's um, oven roasted cabbage and sausage bites. Then um, I'm also having a cup of coffee, um, scoop of collagen, two tablespoons of heavy cream, a tablespoon of butter, and some dashes of salt. This is, I'm still working my way through the bourbon coffee from Fire Department Coffee. Anyway, uh, in case anyone was interested, everything went well with mom's endoscopy this morning and they didn't have to do anything, which that's what you want to hear. You want to hear that they didn't have to do anything. So anyway, now got a lot to do today. I'm having a third cup of coffee. I have got one whopping headache today. I don't know if it's the weather or just, I don't know, stress from this morning. Um, but you know, anyway, just going to have another cup of coffee. Uh, it's got... I did extra butter, tablespoon and a half of butter, two tablespoons of heavy cream, and some salt. And let's see how that goes. Trying again here, uh, that last cup of coffee, it was a brand new flavor and I could taste a sweetener in it. They did not list it on the package. It was Starbucks, brown sugar, cinnamon, and um, yeah, I don't, I don't want a sweetener in my coffee. Um, I never know what the sweetener is going to do to me. The only time I'll have a sweetener at this point is an element because I know it doesn't cause a problem. So here we're trying again. This is um, Dunkin' Donuts Cinemania coffee. And I know this one doesn't have a sweetener in it. I've argued with people about flavored coffee. And they're like, oh, no, no, all flavored coffee has a sweetener. It's like, not the kind that I buy. I can taste a difference. Anyway, that's it for now. This, this is going to be fine. Dinner is going to be a hard boiled egg with some bacon grease and salt, and then some of these fried cheese curds and a little bit of this. I'm not gonna be eating too many of these. I'm not that hungry. This is where the nutrition's at. So this is gonna be dinner and then I'm just gonna have a couple of these. No more coffee tonight. That's it for that. Anyway, that's all for now. Last item of the night is a chocolate caramel element. I am not sponsored by them, so. I'm just saying this is what I'm having. Uh, I add a little bit of cream to it too. Um, yeah, that's going to be it for today. This is one interesting day. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. This video is brought to you by my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, who has everything you need and nothing you don't.